Hi, my name is Tim Schobel, and I'm a NetSuite consultant with Business Solution Partners. And today I'm going to be discussing some of the functionality around shared vendor bills. So shared vendor bills is an integrated suite solution. It's integrated with vendor bill creation, and it allows for the distribution of expense amounts on vendor bills across different subsidiaries or departments, classes, locations, or accounts. Um, this also allows you the ability to define a bill distribution schedule as needed and assign distribution um, schedule to a bill at the time of the vendor bill creation. Uh, this also allows you the, the flexibility to apply a distribution schedule to an entire bill or to exclude line items from the bill. Uh, and it also uh, offers the visibility into the dis bill distribution with the ability to override the distribution schedule when needed. So I'll just explain a little bit more about that here. This is a bill distribution schedule. Uh, this is an amount-based intercompany bill distribution schedule that I've created to reflect uh, the distribution of an expense across two subsidiaries here. This is uh, set with the source subsidiary as US1 and this bill distribution schedule here shows how we can distribute the expense or allocate it out across both subsidiary one and subsidiary two. And I've set up corresponding intercompany AR, intercompany AP accounts, as well as corresponding intercompany com customers and vendors to reflect this flow of funds across subsidiaries. So to apply this to a vendor bill, I'm just gonna pull up a vendor bill the way I would any other by going to transactions, payables, and our bills. So once here on the vendor bill, I'm just gonna make sure I've changed the form to the shared vendor bill form. You'll see certain fields become available once I change this form. And now on the shared vendor bill form, you can see I've got the uh, bill distribution schedule field available, and I also have a bill distribution detail sub tab appearing here. So first I'm going to choose a vendor associated with the subsidiary for which I've set up that bill distribution schedule. So I'm associating this uh, vendor bill with a vendor that is associated with the US1 subsidiary that will then populate the subsidiary field here with US1 and it will allow me to Pick my bill distribution schedule here. Okay, and I'm going to wait for the form to reload. Okay. And now I should be able to choose my bill distribution schedule here. And we see that amount-based intercompany bill distribution schedule. Once I choose that, we can see that the schedules intercompany and amount-based flags appear here. I'm going to pick this location associated with the uh, US-1 subsidiary here. And then I'm going to pick my expense account. So in this example, I'm allocating an insurance expense across subsidiaries US1 and US2. So I'm going to pick an insurance account here. And in this example, I'll just pick an even number to distribute the expense. I'll click add or press enter to add that line. I do want to draw your attention over here to the bill distribution exclude flag. So I can choose to uh, add multiple expense lines here and exclude them from the bill distribution as needed. I'm going to just leave this included. And then I'm going to make sure I save this in a pending approval state. I'm going to save that in a pending approval state because once this is approved, it'll create the uh, journal entry. Uh, so upon approval of the shared vendor bill, there's automated journal entry creation. Um, of, of uh, standard or advanced intercompany journal entries to reflect the distribution for approved vendor bills.
Okay, so now that's saved and pending approval state. And now that it's saved, you'll see I have this adjust distribution option available. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom as well and go to the build distribution detail sub tab. And you can see the two lines, these are coming over from the build distribution uh, schedule that I selected up here. We can see those two lines for each subsidiary and an amount that has not yet been populated uh, to, uh, that should be totaling up to $1,000 here. So to do that, I'm just gonna press this adjust distribution. And once on the screen, I just have to change the uh, transaction amounts for each line to allocate the expense across the subsidiaries here. So you can see I've got these, uh, this amount up here on the right hand side. This is showing me the line amount remaining to distribute that will total up to the $1,000 specified for this expense line. So you can see here I've got line one on the left hand side. These are, that means that both of these lines are associated with the same expense line on the original vendor bill. If I had multiple expense accounts or multiple expense lines here on the vendor bill but associated with the same bill distribution schedule, I could I would see, for example, one, one, two, two, three, three, and so on. That would allow me to uh, place different allocation weights uh, for each subsidiary for per each expense line. Here in this example, we just have one. So I'm going to uh, equally distribute this weight across these two subsidiaries. As I enter each uh, amount, I can see the uh, remaining amount, line amount remaining to distribute changing. I still have $500 left to allocate. And we see this disappear once I've allocated the total amount. Then I just need to click Submit. And this is just an alert saying that you're changing the bill distribution schedule, so click OK. Okay, and once that um, bill distribution has been submitted, it'll take us back to the original vendor bill, the form will refresh. And if we check that bill distribution detail sub tab once more, we can see that the amounts have changed. And we can see that the amount based validations have passed right here. So now I'm going to approve this vendor bill. So I'm just going to edit it. And then this should automate that journal entry creation. So I'm just going to edit it and change the status to approved and click save. Okay. And once that's saved, we can check the bill distribution detail sub tab once more, and we can see that we have the allocation journal entry automatically created. I'm just going to open this in a new tab so you can see. I'll also show the GL impact of the vendor bill. So here we can see that we're debiting our insurance expense and crediting accounts payable. This is on the vendor bill itself. And on the advanced intercompany journal entry created that's associated with this bill, we can see the actual bill distribution schedule at work here, allocating that expense across the subsidiaries. Also, we have a helpful memo showing uh, that this journal entry was created from vendor bill number 6657. Another note here is that you can continue to adjust the distribution as needed. And what this will do is it will reverse the original allocation journal entry and then create a new one. Uh, so that new allocation journal entry would be displayed here. In this sequence, it would be 593, and the reversal journal entry of 591 would be 592. Until this is actually processed for payment, you still have the ability to adjust the distribution as needed. But this is the reason for saving it in a saving the vendor bill in a pending approval status, so that we can adjust the distribution as needed without having all those reversal journal entries.
I also would like to point out that on the bill distribution schedule, this is an amount-based bill distribution schedule. We also have percentage-based uh, bill distribution schedules. These can be saved in an approved state because they have predefined allocation weights, whereas an amount-based bill distribution schedule has to be saved in a pending approval state so that you can define the allocation weights that would total up to the uh, total expense line amount. These can also be adjusted uh, by clicking the adjust distribution on the vendor bill. You can adjust these weights as needed. But again, it's helpful to save this in a pending approval status so that you don't get lots of reversal journal entries. And uh, that about covers it. So that's it for shared vendor bills.